Guys, on this episode of TFL Truck, we're gonna determine and decide which truck is best for you. Is it gonna be a brand new Chevy Silverado Trail Bus or a brand new Ram 1500 Rebel? Both four-wheel drive V8 powered crew cab trucks. Isn't that right? Yeah, and they're both about $55,000. So in this video, we're gonna let you know our opinions, talk about all the numbers. Andre has an extensive list of things we need to hit. Yes, I have a big checklist. So we're gonna talk about kind of configuration, power options, fuel economy, which is a big thing, um, suspension systems, utility like beds, and interior. And we're gonna pick our favorites at the end of this, let you know which one you should buy. Now it's worth noting, both of these trucks are independently owned. So the Fastlane truck owns a Silverado Trail Boss. We've had it for about nine months, yes. 11,000 miles. And that Ram Rebel, brand new, our videographer and producer Alex just brought this one to the office. Do you love motorcycles? So do we. That's why we're bringing TFL videos to two wheels. Check out TFL Bike for all things two wheels. Link is down in the description. So let's pop the hood on this one first and check it out, right? Yeah, for sure. So it's probably not too much of a surprise what you'll find underneath the hood of a Ram 1500. But Andre, do you want to break the news? So yes, so Alex chose this one. Um, it's a 5.7 liter Hemi V8, and this has the e-torque, their mild hybrid system which is basically a small electric motor that's connected to the engine using the serpentine belt. And um, the power rating on this one is 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission, but there are many, many engine options in the Rebel. You could start out with a 3.6 liter Pentastar. I know how much you love that engine, Tommy. No comment. Okay, uh, there, there's also the Hemi V8 without the e-torque, and you can also get a Rebel with a three-liter turbo diesel. Andre, I have a question. What? Why is there a food processor on the top of the 5.7 there? <laughs> it's not a food processor, dude. This is an electric motor that enables start-stop, so when this truck comes to a complete stop, the engine can shut off, all accessories can remain working, and this also is there to kind of make the shifting smoother, it's not really helpful on fuel efficiency, though. Do I have to get it with the food processor? Or? No, no, you can get it without it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And the food processor only costs about 200 bucks extra. Wow, so they've really made e-torque affordable. Yes, they So did. let's talk about the Silverado. Slightly different philosophy here. With slightly different uh, dirt content. <laughs> yes, this one has not only Moab dirt, it has Colorado dust, it has uh, Wyoming dust. It's, uh, it's been through a lot, this truck. But this is a 5.3, right, Andre? Yeah, and... Um, also several engine options on the Silverado 1500 Trail Bus. This engine, the 5.3, produces 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque, but we have a 10-speed automatic behind this engine. Um, you could also get the 4.3 liter V6 and the gigantic 6.2 liter gas V8, but no diesel. So Andre's pretty tall, you're 6'2". Yes. Let's do the dipstick test. Can you reach the dipstick on both of these trucks? Because they're pretty tall. Are you calling me a dipstick? I'm calling you dipstick. No. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so on the Silverado, it's pretty easy for me. I am, you know, taller than some people, but I can reach the dipstick quite easily and I can put it back. The battery is here, but it's got this giant plastic box over it. Yeah, but they look, they got rid of the, the horrible side terminals. They finally went to like, a regular battery normal people use. All right, Ram. Oh, but this is easier, I think. See, there is nothing, no plastic protruding over this battery. And the dipstick is actually on this side, and it's even easier. Um, so I think the Ram kind of wins the dipstick test. You know what's interesting? If you come over here, Alex, look at the sheer amount of room <laughs> between the front of the engine and the radiator. You could, you could probably fit another bank of cylinders in there easily, have like a V10, maybe V12. It's amazing how much room is underneath this engine bay. Cause like the whole engine is shifted pretty far back. Yeah, and I think it helps the weight distribution of the truck too. Cool. I, I think you're right. So we have to decide this winter. I think for power choice, Ram has it because diesel is available. Yeah, I mean, there's a diesel in the Chevy, but not for the trail box. Yes, but talk about fuel efficiency really quick, right? Cause this is a big deal. We've tested both of these trucks. So we used to own a Ram Rebel, remember the Rebel Rouser? Yep. We took it all the way across country several times and we could never get the EPA ratings that it had. 
which was um, 17 city 22 highway 19 combined which is exactly the same rating on this 2020 truck right if you remember i took the, our rebel on our mpg loop and got 17.9 mpg okay so what about the trail boss way better way better so this engine the 5.3 and we're comparing these exact trucks has a rating uh, lower rating on the epa but better real world mpg that we got so 16 city 21 highway 18 combined so a little bit less one less than the ram but in the real world, we were able to get 20.7. So I think real world, Apple for Apple, the Trail Boss has the fuel efficiency. So I know you gave the engine award to the Ram because of the diesel option yeah. in the Rebel, but I, I drove the 6.2 in the Trail Boss pretty yeah. extensively, and that's kind of a beast. Yeah, I would have to agree. You know, 420 horsepower is kind so, of a monster. When you combine efficiency, I think Chevy takes it. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the styling of the trucks. And this is largely subjective, but we are gonna point some stuff out, right, Andre? Yep, uh, well, these are off-road trucks. So it's not just about style because style is very subjective. And of course, it's up to you guys to choose Ram or Chevrolet. Uh, but let's talk about skid plates and kind of the bumper design in the front. So the lower front end of the Rebel is largely made up of this big metal skid plate that extends underneath and these black tow hooks. It's a shame they're painted black. You can't use a black tow hook on the trail. <laughs> That's a known fact now as, as Chevrolet has proven, but very different bumper design on the Chevrolet. So what you'll notice is a lot more plastic in the front of the vehicle. And then underneath is where you'll actually hit the, uh, the metal skid plate. We have uh, pretty thoroughly punched this plastic in off road once or twice. You can see the license plate is all bent up. So in that respect, the Ram is better, but if you look at, you know, overall approach angle, it looks to be a little better on the Silverado than on the Rebel. But if you ask kind of people who pay a lot of attention to kind of approach angles, um, uh, there's slightly better cut here. So you have the wheel on the Ram has a little bit better access to going over obstacle than the Chevy, but uh, you can see right here, but the license plate on the Ram hangs way low. So it's kind of a toss up, but because of the steel bash plate, I kind of, I want to lean Ram here. Okay. Where are you at? Yeah, I can lean Ram. I mean, this has red tow hooks though, Andre. That's oh, a big deal. Oh, oh, I forgot. Uh, no. So yeah, I, I like the front end setup on the Ram more, but overall front end design, this is very subjective. I'm not sure I like the Italian mustache very much. <laughs> It's a little funky. I think the, uh, the front end profile of the Silverado is a little cleaner. This is a Tom Peters design. He wanted like that fist in the wind kind and of he, design. And he got it. Yeah, that's the same dude who did C7 and C8 Corvette, by the way. Yes. And you also have these aero skirts here, which are pretty neat. Yeah, I think like this is an unpopular choice, but I think that the Silverado looks better. Dude, let's move on to tires and suspension systems because that's really important on these trucks. These are both specialty off-road packages. I need my measuring tape. Can you mention the tires first? Yeah, well, they are both Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. Interestingly enough, though, on the Silverado, they went with the white in, so it's black lettering out. But on the Rebel, they went with the white lettering out. This is a, I like the white lettering out, by the way. I think it looks cool. What about tire size, Andre? Dude, it's way different. And I've also recently spoke to both uh, GM engineers, Ram engineers, and they told me kind of a little known fact that even though the brand of the tire is identical, the composition of the tire can be different because different manufacturers have, have different needs. Um, so even though they're both Duratrax, they might be slightly different composition. But the GM Trail Boss, in this case, has a 32-inch tall tire. And if you measure it here, it's 31 and a half. The way that a truck sits with its weight on its tires, the Ram... 32 and a half, it's a 33 inch tall tire. So I think Ram wins this just because, just by sheer fact that it's a larger tire. I agree. I mean, granted our Silverado tires are a tiny bit worn down, but just visually, like from the side profile, the Silverado tires don't fill in the wheel wells nearly as well as the Rams do. So yeah. we gotta talk about suspension lift shocks really quick. Okay. Yes, and then how about we start the engines? And also talk about beds a little, a little bit before we get inside. Yeah, sure. Why not? So both have both trucks have lifts, suspension lifts about two inches higher than other 
uh, comparable trucks in their uh, lineups. Uh, Bilstein trucks versus Rancho. Right. Um, so I'll yellow. Have to hang on, yellow versus red. red. <laughs> Once again, red. <laughs> GM has this red thing. Yeah, they're really, really going all in on the red. <laughs> so it's kind of a toss-up. You know, Bilstein is a good, you know, really high, reputable company. You know, Rancho. You know, I don't know, maybe quite not as high of a you know performance shock. I mean, neither of them are like full Baja desert running shocks. Uh, you can kind of see the uh, the suspension setup is pretty similar in uh well that no that's a total lie i just made that up so, <laughs> I, I was thinking about something wrong so the silverado uses leaf springs in the rear yes and the uh the ram uses coil springs in the rear yes and the five link versus this kind of solid axle design yep and ram also offers air you can get what, air what does suspension. that mean oh air suspension <laughs> you can breathe the air so I don't know if you can see this, but here's a coil spring. Um, Alex chose a, a steel coil spring suspension. I think that's probably the way to go because air is nice. It's very luxurious. You can raise and lower your truck. But if you want to modify the suspension, air is really hard to modify. I think every day off-road, I like the Rebel setup more. I think especially in the rear, it provides a, a better ride over big rocks. For towing though, I like the Silverado a little bit more. I don't know if it has to do with that leaf spring setup, but it does feel really sturdy as you go down the road uh, towing a big load. Yeah, dude, but, but the Ram has a higher tow rating, okay. actually. So we got about 11,000 pounds here hmm. versus about 9,500 pounds there. Would I tow 11,000 here? Well, yeah, we did that on the <laughs> Ike. But would I do it every day? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about the beds a little bit because there are some pretty substantial differences. And then once again, I have my tape. Okay, are you, are you ready? Andre measures so many things so many times. Okay, so let's check out the uh, Chevy bed. And this is, once again, redesigned, fully new trucks. Uh, both of them redesigned for 2019. They redesigned the bed, as you can kind of see here, it's 70 inches long right here so they also push the walls out so it's really wide yeah and ignore the tent because that's not part of it that's oh yeah us. that's something else uh one thing i will notice i do like the the steps in the bumper that is a handy feature but i also like there's a ton of tie downs so you have three on this back wall here uh you've got places here for wood inserts for wood yes. you've got two more up front one at the very front and that's um, uh, copied on the other side as well. So just huge amounts of tie downs in the and, back of this. And these little holes, they're for additional tie downs that you could buy. So you can get more of them? Yes. Huh. You yeah, can they're... have like hundreds of different tie downs. That's a lot. Like, okay, not like hundreds. But... Hun hundreds. <laughs> the whole wall tie downs. It's a very usable bed though. Yes. Uh, what about tailgate? Is it damp? Uh, yes, I'm going to lock you there. But it has a button, okay? So notice this. A button. It is, is it damped or dampened? I think it's the, oh, okay. Let's not. Let's go check out. Remember, seventy inches tall, uh, long. Okay. Little little cutouts for cup holders. Yeah, when you drink your Sprite or Dr Pepper, right? <coughs> sure. Okay. So let's let's look at the Ram bed. These trucks have um, about the same payload capability. So payload is kind of a toss up. What are you trying to do? There's no step there. Is there an optional one that like comes down from the bumper? Yeah, there's a little thing you can kick down like like starting a motorcycle. But this one doesn't have it. No. So yeah, so that's kind of a shame. Okay. Um, this is, is it, way better. So no button, but the actual handle. Well, it's still a button. It's just a button within oh. like a cubby. Oh, really? But still damp. Okay. Dint, damp, dint. Yes. Let's measure the length <laughs> because you would think they would be identical, right? Right. Whoa. Ooh, about 67, dude. So about three inches uh, longer on the Chevrolet. That's a, that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, and the Chevy bed is a little bit wider as well. So, uh, and what about tie downs, dude? <laughs> well, this truck only has, I think four. So yeah. this one has one on uh, either corner in the, the, toward the, the uh, bulkhead here. We have leaves falling. I know. Okay. And then we have two more in the back here. Uh, I think there are optionally more the, tie downs though, right? There are also rails. You can get a rail system. Oh, you okay. know how the Gladiator has that um, utility rail? Yeah. So you can mount that up and it's only like 400 bucks or 300 bucks or something. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, I noticed this too. You've got cutouts here in the, uh, uh, not quite as usable as the Silverado bed for hauling, you know, lumber and stuff, but you do have some cutouts in the uh, fender wells. Yeah, for wood. And actually between fender wells, 
there's about uh, half an inch dip more in the Ram than the Chevy, about 50 and a half here and 50 in the Chevy. So we have to decide who wins the bed competition. So I think if you're hauling like grain and sand, Chevy takes it every day because more volume. Just okay. grain and sand? No, no, no. What is that like? I, I would also say uh, <laughs> fun stuff like motorcycles as well. I think the Chevrolet is a little better. It's, it is a little bit better, and I know uh, Alex loves you know the TFL bike channel because he's a presenter there. So that's important for motorcycles. Managing editor, mind you. Yeah, Andre. managing editor. So exhaust is a pretty interesting setup here. Yeah, let, let's can I start it? Yeah, actually I'll start it. Okay. I want your uh, oh, hold on. honest opinion. <laughs> of course, there's a UPS delivery truck. Okay, that's good. You know, it's the thing about the Hemi engine. It always sounds good. All right. Uh, uh, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Next okay. one, you want to try the Chevy? Yes. You know what? Every time the trail bus starts up, um, it surprises me. Every time this truck surprises me. In a good way? In a good way. I think it has good growl. Um, it doesn't let you rev the engine sitting there, right? Um, I think it's kind of a toss up, dude. I don't know. I think, I, I personally think the Rebel sounds better, uh, especially with the Mopar exhaust. Oh, yes. Pretty ridiculous. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I would give it to the Rebel. I think that 5.7 sounds a little better than the 5.3. Stock to stock, at least. Yeah. But why don't we jump uh, inside? We'll yeah. start with the Ram. We'll get your opinion on the uh, interiors, and that's where we'll start talking yeah. about some of the features. And we're almost done. Um, after the interior, we have to decide. Okay, go for it. Okay. Before I go on the technology side, let's do the space in the rear. Uh, these have identical door lengths. It's about 42 inches on both of these trucks. Huge doors. Huge space. Just look at this ram. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's like three feet of leg space here. It's ridiculous. Um, the seats, of course, fold up. Very easy to operate. <laughs> Tommy, look at this. It's like a limo. I mean, I can go like this cross country. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's really, really good. Okay. Oh, you also have heated seats back there. Did you see that? Yes, for 55 grand. Very fancy. So, check it out. Come here. Um, so I've got heated seats, USB-C, USBs, and a regular plug, 400 uh, watt. So, and vents, all that. What do you have a, very what's, a, what's in a Chevy? Well, so the Chevy also is a very big back seat. I don't think the door opens quite as wide. I mean, that one was basically, you know, 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the Chevy doesn't quite go as far, but still enormous rear seat. Uh, I do have vents back here, so I do have some vents. Um, my little 12 volt power outlet there, USB-C, USB, slightly less power in the back of the Chevy compared to the uh, okay. the Ram, but still, I mean, like, I'm six foot one. Fully extended the leg there. Tons of room. Let's check out the under seat storage. Ooh, actually, look at this. Perfect for your Nerf gun, Andre. Ram doesn't have that. No, or your, uh, your little squirt gun there. Okay. Um, but the... Seat cushions do fold up in this fixed storage bin. So on the Ram, you can kind of configure the storage bin. This one has a fixed setup. Uh, but if you if you have dogs, uh, stuff that needs to be protected from the elements, you can still haul a lot of stuff in the back of the Chevy. Dude, can you jump in in the passenger seat here? I wanna I wanna show the Ram. Okay, Tommy. I think this is the end of story because. <laughs> this got the 12 inch infotainment system for 50 just over 55 grand Wow, so first of all Ram I think they stepped up, you know with this generation of interiors in a big way. This truck is offering 
um, level 2 group and also rebel 12 group level 2 gives you a lot of luxury features like heated seats what's happening why is it doing this okay um, heated seats heated steering wheel all that stuff and then rebel 12 gives you this the cool infotainment screen and giant um, you know everything but also 19 speakers gee wow no, what the heck 19 speakers that's crazy yeah. so the ram rebel 12 the 12 inch screen is going to be something you either love or hate i think it's really cool uh you know you've got phone connectivity uh you've got all your controls in here heated seats heated steering wheels all incorporated backup camera some people like it some people don't right because it's all pretty much digital you do have some hard controls for like fan speed over there uh dual zone temperature you still have a tune knob and a volume knob which is nice but let us know in the comment section below what do you think of the ram rule 12. it is pretty cool that you know price wise we're looking at a matter of a few hundred dollar difference msrp wise and you you get this 12 in, in this truck yes in this you get this you got sliding consoles this and this wireless charging Did you wireless, see the wireless charging, charging right here two usbs two usb c's yes and then we'll talk about the four-wheel drive system because they're kind of different yeah and this got the rotary dial so it's a prefer uh, personal preference which you like more for the transmission you have hill descent control uh right here axle lock four low it's all right here really close and uh, you know after owning this truck for a year last year I got really used to this. It's cool. Also, dual glove boxes. Dual yep. glove boxes. Is that that sounds funny. Dual. Yep, you got the duals. Uh, and no sunroof on this one. No. Nope. You can have a sunroof, but not on this one. Yeah, and the gauges too. You all have a very big central display, which is configurable on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of cycle through the uh, the screen there in the middle. But very digital on the inside of this Ram, right? Very. And modern. I think really premium. It feels nice. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's jump in in the Chevy. Let's check out the Chevy. All right, well, welcome to the 1990s. What? <laughs> no, that's a little harsh. Um, well, it's not all that harsh. The, the interior of the Chevy is uh, very analog, is a, is a good way of putting it. So, still a push button start, but I've got uh, buttons, dials, knobs for everything, and then a much smaller eight inch display here. Uh, I do have something to admit though. What? I, I really, I've been so hard in this interior in the past, but after owning this truck for eight, nine months, like it just works. It, it's not particularly fancy or all that nice, but like it's got buttons and dials and you can adjust the fan speed easily and quickly. And you don't have to think about, you know, finding the uh, area to adjust where the uh, climate flows. And of course it's a GM, so it'll beep at you, on, you know, forever. It does beep a lot. So this one, you can kind of see the functionality of the central screen. Not quite as zippy. Mm -hmm. uh, graphics are not not quite as impressive if we're being honest this one also doesn't have integrated navigation you have to use your but phone punch the camera button just really quick just swipe yeah it's at the top so camera i think the camera view resolution is a little bit better on the ram actually. yeah it's kind of a potato this is brilliant though look at this ready what? you got a true column shift oh i love that that is brilliant it really is nice and actually if you get past the fisher price plastics uh you do see like a lot of features so this one is heated seats it still has a heated steering wheel uh, it still has dual zone automatic climate uh this one also has sirius xm so like all the stuff is in here it's just maybe not quite as nice to use if that makes sense but you know remember in the ram it has an axle lock button where is your axle lock button here it's not it's it's it, it it's an automatic lock yes right it, yes yeah so i've got auto functions four high four low two high it's got something called a g80 rear differential lock so it is a proper locker i will fight you out there people who tell me it's not a proper locker i mean i lose it locks by itself squirrel and gerbil here but yeah it does it locks by itself yes. when one wheel spins yes. uh, this area as video for Alex pointed out, it's very usable. So like, there's huge amounts of storage. We don't have a wireless charging in this truck, uh, charging tray in this truck here, but like tons of places and cubbies for things. Glove boxes are probably dual. bigger. Dual. Still dual, yeah. And then the screen in the cluster, much smaller, but I do like the physical gauges for, uh, you know, uh, oil pressure. I do like the physical gauges for like water temp there. It's really nice to have. They're always there. You don't have to like futz through a menu. Yeah, and both of these trucks have trailer brake controllers for towing. 
Um, and you got a power, a couple of power outlets here too. I do, yeah. So there's my 110 there. I've got a 12 volt and then I even have a USB-C USB in the uh, center there. Yeah, right. it's nice. It's, it's, it's not as mad as I make it sound. No, well, let's jump out and decide which one you would pick. All right, dude, so th this is a tough choice. I think for 55 grand, both of them have their merits, uh, pros and cons. Uh, what, are you, what would you choose out of these two? Well, we've kind of had a unique experience because we've owned both of these yes, trucks yes, long term. Yes. So this gray truck is Alex's truck. It's brand new, it's got 100 miles on it. But we had a red one for a year, Yes. just like it. Uh -huh. Also 55-ish grand. Yes. Um, and we've had this for almost a year, the Silverado. Yes. I hate, to, I hate to say it because I'm really into tech, but I like the Chevy more. You know, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's not particularly flashy or fancy. It does have two more speeds in the transmission. Yes. 10 speed it versus does. eight speed. But yeah, like the interior is old school, but it just works. It's pretty comfortable on road. It's okay off road. It tows really well. Like I just, I like it more. It feels more truck like than the Ram. How about you? Hmm. Very tough choice. Um, with one little caveat, uh, I wish the Rebel got better fuel efficiency. Y yeah. Just just one small nick in the in the armor, but I'll go Rem Rebel. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Like it's a great truck. It, it's it really rides great. Uh, slightly larger tire. It's got V8. Great hemi power. Uh, it's technology laden. Right. <laughs> so Stay. I gotta go Ram. All right, well, let us know what you think in the comment section below. This is probably going to turn into a yelling match down there, so let's keep it civil. Okay, and go back to tfltruck.com and tfloffroad.com where we have truck videos and off-road videos. Yeah, for sure. Let us know what you think.